Okay, I want to start by thanking everyone for being here today. Uh, that's a really tough act to follow, by the way. Uh, but I'm going to give it a try. Uh, when I actually first told uh, my parents that I was coming here today to do a TED talk, my father asked if it was anything to do with the movie. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I explained no. Uh, my father was always very easily confused, especially by uh, the modern world. Uh, and I said, in fact, I was here to talk about uh, connections, uh, social media connections in particular. Uh, and the reason that I wanted to talk about social media connections and the reason I was invited here really to talk uh, today was because we've done some really cool, interesting, exciting things on social media over the last year, uh, mainly in our business, where we have tried to excite and delight uh, customers using Facebook, using Twitter, uh, and using modern social media technology. Uh, we launched a business about 12 months ago called Zagora.com, and that business uh, sells sports clothing to women. Uh, sports clothing with a difference, uh, the clothing actually heats you up, so it makes women hot uh, when they're working out, <laughs> uh, both physically and emotionally. <laughs> and so the problem that we had when we first started that business is, you know, we had no money. So we didn't have a choice. We had to use social media because, of course, social media is free. How many people here have a Facebook account? Raise your hands. That's pretty much everyone. OK, who tweets? Who's tweeting right now? <laughs> More than, all right, very good. Um, so it's a technology that's very familiar to us. It was a technology that was familiar to me. Uh, and it was the most logical, easy way uh, to start a business. It, of course, meant spending a lot of time because, to begin with, when we started our business, we had no followers, we had no friends. Um, we had very few real-world friends because we worked so much. <laughs> so we had to spend time generating a user base, tweeting things that were interesting, exciting, engaging. And after 12 months, we managed to build a Facebook fan base of about 330,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a Twitter following of around 30,000. And we've really been able to capture the imagination. Now, all of this is very familiar to most of us here in the room. But for people who are older, uh, like my parents, uh, like my father in particular, uh, who thought that my TED talk today was about the movie, you know, they, they're quite easily confused by this kind of modern technology. Uh, my father was born in 1938 uh, at a time when there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter. Uh, he actually was born in a pit village in the north of England where not even all homes uh, had a telephone. Uh, you had to run down the street, in fact, to use a telephone. It was really an age that was so far removed from the kind of modern technology that we get to use today. As he grew up, uh, there were things like typewriters that he would use to work on. They didn't even have PCs back then. Uh, and by the time I was born, this is me coming up, little baldy head. Uh, <laughs> Technology started to develop. I was born in 1981. And the pace of change, uh, as we've heard today, as you will see in other TED Talks on the TED website, talk about this pace of change, this pace of technology change that is bringing us communications technologies that are increasingly powerful. So there was the PC uh, when I was born. And he started to use the PC. It took him a while, but he got there in the end. Uh, by the time I was 15, uh, this is me with a bad haircut, um, <laughs> there was the mobile phone. Now, the first mobile phone was pretty big. Uh, it did, of course, over time get smaller. Uh, but it started out being pretty huge. Uh, and so whilst my father really tried to keep up with these te technologies, you know, the pace of change was just so great that he stopped, I think, being able to keep up after a while. So by the time we got to a year or two ago and I told him, you know, if you type Google into Google, the internet will break. Uh, <laughs> I think he actually half believed me. <laughs> now, if you think of your own family, if you think of people who are in your family, who are older, your, your parents, probably more likely your grandparents, uh, this may be a familiar theme. Um, we live in an age where the change is so great that even when my father would go to a cash point, he would actually ask my mother to stand behind him and make sure no one's coming. Because he was worried that if the machine gave his card back, he actually had a fear that the machine wouldn't give his card back. But if the machine did give him his card back and the money came out, someone else would take it. 
So he had to really adapt, and he really had to change, and that was very difficult. So what I started to do about a year ago was I tried to explain to him what these new communications technologies really were uh, and how we use them. So I started, obviously, with Facebook because, you know, Facebook is a really global platform. A billion people now every month access it, use it. Um, and we had a rehearsal yesterday, and actually it was pointed out to me here by Simon that you're going to be hearing from later that, you know, how many people do you actually meet on Facebook? Not many, right? They're mainly people who you have already met in the real world. And it allows you to sort of keep up with them. So you have your friends, uh, and you can see what your friends are doing. And I explained all of this to my father that, you know, when people are on Facebook, they share things like where they've been. You know, this is when I went to Norma's a couple of days ago. Um, they share photos. This is a photo of my dad uh, and my mom. And it's really all about sharing experiences. And we do this in a super fast digital way. Um, I also explained that, you know, there was other platforms, it wasn't just Facebook, um, that fell into this kind of social media category. There was also Twitter. Uh, and Twitter, in fact, was a little bit different in the sense that it allowed people to meet and connect and to hear stories or views or um, thoughts, really, from people who they didn't know. Um, people often shared, you know, experiences about getting older. So here's Hugh Hefner <laughs> telling us that, He's trying to figure out, you know, as he gets older, more and more young women want to be with him. Um, people talk about love. <laughs> In all its many varieties. And so we booked our tickets um, to be here today so I would be able to um, finish this course, I guess, on social media. Now, about a week after we booked our tickets to be here, uh, my father died. So I'm not actually able to finish this course. But I learned a lot of really interesting things during the time of his death. My father was working at his desk. This was the last photo I took of him. And he was working at his desk for the, light, the last time. He was a writer. He used to like to write. From the age of 16, he would write books, he'd write short stories. Uh, never poems, but he liked poems. But he knew how to use a PC. You know, so from the time I was born, he was accustomed to using uh, and now typing on a PC. Um, but he managed to achieve so much during his life without using these communications platforms and these communications technologies that most of us here today have the ability to use ourselves. Who has a smartphone in their pocket right now? Okay, it's pretty much everyone. That's really powerful. This is a weapon. Siri you have a weapon. Available. Siri's not available. Um, <laughs> this, this is a weapon. It's, you'd be amazed what Siri can do uh, if you ask it the right questions. Um, my father achieved so much. Now, this is him when he was younger. Um, and I was thinking about this during the time that I was kind of waiting for him really to die, because it was very quick. I would sit at the top of the stairs outside of his bedroom um, for 11 days. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and 11 days later, he was gone. And I was thinking about how, during his life, he managed to form so many connections with people, and he managed to achieve so many things. I didn't actually realize until after he died, in the many hundreds of letters that we received from people, how many connections he was able to form. And he did it without using Facebook. He did it without using Twitter. And in each one of these letters was a legacy, something that he was so proud of, and something that I was proud of, all of the stories that we heard from people who had worked with him, or who'd been to school with him, or had known him when he was 15, 20 years old, wrote to us. They also are not, by the way, on Facebook. And so I really thought about this. You know, we have this enormous power in these social networks, but most of us tend to use it in a kind of superficial way. You know, we tweet about love, we tweet about life. These are important things that we're sharing, but actually these, power, these, these platforms are so powerful that we can use them to a much greater effect. Now, we've heard some great talks today about some of the things that can be done um, by taking action, not just using social media. Um, on the TED website, you will see hundreds of fantastic stories and problems that we're facing and challenges that we're facing. Because you may ask yourself, you know, why is it important? Why is it interesting to use the power of social media to make a difference? You know, why should we? Uh, I'm more than happy just tweeting about my lunch. I'm more than happy about posting an image on Facebook about where I was with my friends. I don't actually want to make a difference. Well, if you look around the TED site, you will see all of these different issues that we face. 
um, climate change, technology, innovation, creativity, education. You know, we're facing a lot of challenges. And I think to really overcome all of these challenges is going to take all of our efforts. We all need to really make an effort to leave something to behind, to create a legacy, a legacy like my father's. Now, I was looking around, and actually, I thought, actually, a great place to start would be Meetup, because Meetup.com allows you to connect very easily with people who have a similar interest with you to arrange a meeting. Um, it may be cookery, it may be um, environmental change, it might be climate change, it might be some sort of a community action where, wherever you live. But when they first launched meetup.com, the most popular interest group was in fact witches. <laughs> now, that kind of makes sense, because if you think about it, if you're a witch, how do you meet other witches, <laughs> right? This was a time before Harry Potter, you know? Um, but meetup.com allows you to meet other people who have a like mind. So you can organize very easily, very simply. You can do it from your phone right now. It's meetup.com. If you're a witch, you can meet other witches. <laughs> and people are already doing this. People are already organizing. They're already taking action. They're already using these social media tools. What we need is more of us to do it. People are organizing revolutions. In Egypt, they changed the government. They changed the country by organizing on Twitter and on Facebook. People in Colombia organized demonstrations against FARC. The power is in your hands, it's in your pocket, it's in your smartphone that you're holding right now. So I guess how I want to really finish is to present a challenge to each and every one of you who's here today or who are watching. How is it that you're going to use this power, this power that we're blessed with in these communications platforms that our parents, our grandparents didn't have, how are you actually going to use these yourself to make a contribution, to make a difference to the community and the world in which you live? Thank you.